Hello and welcome to this week's webinar from Santico. Coming up today, an industrial strength customer relationship management system for companies using Sage 50 manufacturing, or indeed for manufacturing companies using Sage 50. How to connect manufacturers and their independent sales reps so together they can serve that customer better and manage that customer relationship better. Firstly, a couple of things on terminology. What do I mean by industrial strength? Because, of course, this could mean many things to many people. But for the purposes of today, what I mean is durable. So a CRM system that you can expect to be using still in four years' time. And the other point of definition is, what do I mean by CRM? Because, again, CRM, or Customer Relationship Management System, again, can mean many things to many people. And we'll, I'll be going into this in more detail later on in the presentation. But what I mean... It's small c, small r, small m, despite actually what's put on the slide there, in terms of the real meaning of customer relationship management system. Helping you, through your direct sales team and your independent sales reps, manage those relationships with your customers better. My name's Hugh Johnson. I'm Head of Business Development at Suntico. And if you'd like to get in touch with me after this webinar, you can do so, and you're very welcome to, via the usual social channels or by email at hugh.johnson at suntico.com. On the agenda today, we'll be looking at the role that independent sales reps play in helping manufacturers get their products out to the customers. We're going to take a look at CRM systems. What is a CRM system? What different flavors of CRM system are there? And why is it that so many CRM projects fail? And if you want to deliver a CRM system that helps you work through and with your independent sales reps to deliver a premium service to your customers, what would that look like? And finally, at the end, we'll take a brief look at Santico and how Santico can fill that gap and deliver that CRM for your independent sales reps to enable you, through them, to manage a better relationship with your customers. If you want a, a more in-depth demonstration of Santico in this purpose and in this role, please join us next week for a Hangout on Air at the same time, 1300 Eastern Time. So let's get on with the meat of today. And starting off with the life of an independent sales rep. Well, firstly, it's big business. In the United States, there are 150,000 independent sales reps gathered together via about 25,000 companies, sales companies, each employing about six reps. And these are independent organizations, typically representing about 10 different manufacturers and their product lines. So as far as you're concerned, they're independent. And that dictates very largely on what they are willing to do and how they can engage with you and what kind of systems are useful for you to, to provide to them to support them to do the business for you. These independent sales reps are very important in the manufacturing supply chain, particularly for lower tier or for smaller manufacturers. They can provide a very cost-effective way to reach a large market, particularly if the customers can be quite small and distributed across a large geography. And it fits particularly well if your product is relatively simple, uncomplex product that doesn't take too much uh, training, but where the sales process is fairly straightforward, where effectively all you, what you need is you need face time from the sales rep in front of the customer and the ability to talk intelligently and wisely about the products and to take orders on your behalf. You may also consider using independent sales reps to help minimize financial risk in terms of the upfront cost and investment of your own direct sales team, or indeed if your own core competence, not in selling, where you may be absolutely superb at manufacturing your products, but not that good at selling them. So again, these are all reasons why you may be using independent sales reps. It's very common, as you probably know, in the US, about half or even more than that, certainly more than half US manufacturers use independent sales reps to get their products out to the customers. And in total, they would represent about 11% of total sales for manufacturers. And in fact, most manufacturers would, would actually use a combination of independent reps and their own direct sales teams, with their direct teams handling the large in-house accounts. Now I want to move on and just briefly talk about CRM systems, because anyone that knows anything about CRM systems will actually have a different view on what a CRM system is. So. There are many interpretations, and it depends on your perspective, whether it, it's all about Salesforce automation, managing sales pipelines and opportunities, or contact management, maybe marketing automation, maybe providing actually direct 
customer access to um, customer portals, managing quotations process, sales order processing, managing customers and customer service or general account management. These are all different aspects of a CRM system and what's important to you will depend on your own requirements and people have their different views. But there's one thing that is quite clear. It's surprising in a way because a CRM system is intended really to help the sales teams and the sales reps serve their customers better. But the unfortunate truth is that an awful lot of sales reps actually hate CRM systems. And this does seem surprising, but actually when you delve down and you look at it a bit deeper, you can see why. Because actually, an awful lot of CRM systems are not actually that useful for the sales guy. A lot of them for the sales managers. A lot of them are like kind of big brother spying on the sales rep. What are you doing? Who are you calling on? What's your pipeline like? Have you updated it? And if that's all a CRM system is, it's going to be resented because actually what it is, it's an extra bit of form filling for the sales rep to do without actually helping the customer in the sales process and helping the customer engage with the client and close the deal. So these are reasons why sales reps actually hate CRM systems. And I remember actually when I was a young rookie salesman, and, I, and this would be back in the in the very early 1990s, in fact I think it was actually in the late 1980s, before there was such a term as, as CRM systems. And I was asked to by the IT department of this big multinational that I was working for to come and try this new system for the sales team. And they'd spent about, I, I believe, about four million dollars on building this system for the sales team. And I tried it. And I turned around and I said, guys, I said, you've wasted your money. And there was this look of shock and horror. And, and they said, why? And I said, it's very simple. This doesn't help the sales guy do his job. This helps the finance guys and the sales management track what they believe is the sales pipeline and the forecasting, but it doesn't help the sales rep. And what's going to happen is the sales rep, five minutes before the weekly sales meeting, will just quickly update the system. And that's all. And in fact, a spreadsheet is a lot easier and a lot faster to use if that's what it's there for. So these are the reasons why sales reps hate CRM systems. Now, imagine for a second, then, if you were an independent sales rep, and you had 10 of these systems because you're rep representing 10 different product lines. It's a nonsense. So that won't work. And for these and perhaps other reasons as well, most CRM systems in manufacturing companies are abandoned within four years. Now, I don't mean companies that have just kind of dabbled and just taken out a small $10 subscription or something like that. I mean companies that have genuinely tried to put in a system and work at it. Within four years, most of them are abandoned in manufacturing companies. And half of these are actually abandoned within the first year. And that's a shame, but there's a very clear reason for this. And actually, if you delve down, if you look at all the research, the clear problem is that in many cases, there's, there's no clear purpose to the CRM system. It's kind of vague. It's kind of put in there to kind of help the sales team. And they lack the razor-sharp purpose that the system has put in. And around that purpose, then if you're going to put in a system, you need to gather and align your people and your data and your processes to make it work. But if you haven't got the clear purpose in the first place, then you're not, you're not going to align your data and you're not going to align your people and processes either. So that's probably the single biggest reason why CRM systems do fail. And if you think then about the world of an independent sales rep, well, if you look at the different flavors of a CRM s system, it makes no sense for 10 manufacturers to be providing a sales rep with a Salesforce automation, a pipeline and opportunity management system, or indeed, or indeed a, even a contact management system. You as a manufacturer might be itching to know all the visits, all the calls, all the contacts, and so on. But the last thing that one of these sales reps actually wants to do for you is be filling in contact details in 10 different systems. So you probably have to kind of lump it if you're the manufacturer and accept this, that a lot of that data, the contacts, the meetings, the appointments and stuff like that, really is the property of the sales rep, or at least that's the way the sales rep will see it. And um, you're unlikely to see all of the detail behind that. Also, if you look at marketing automation, that's not really something the, sa the independent sales reps want to get involved in. That's something that you should be driving out from head office. In fact, that's something we can help you with, but that's a, a, a secondary issue here. E-commerce, you could probably argue, is the, is, the, is the enemy of the independent sales rep 
because actually what they want to do is they want to be taking the orders and, and not the customers going directly to your website to place the orders and thereby avoiding the rep. A nice system to handle quotations management or order processing could work well for the rep as long as it's made nice and simple because again the last thing that, that the rep wants is to, to have to learn 10 different systems to manage a quotations or, or order processing system. But if you, if you look at life today and the way your independent reps work they you probably support them through some kind of support desk that will help provide them with the information they need possibly even provide quotations on their behalf if, if they're not permitted to do the quotations directly it depends how you operate provide information about stock provide information about pricing help you ex expedite orders and, and so on and so forth so there's a support desk that the sales reps will be interacting with and I would argue that actually Probably the most useful tools that you can provide for an independent sales rep is some kind of portal where they can gain access to that customer information, the history, the previous purchases, the status of current orders, what they paid last time, what they're paying this time, have they paid, haven't they paid, and really a kind of portal where they can self, the rep can self-serve in terms of a lot of the information they be, may otherwise be emailing or phoning you for, but also where they may interact with your teams in a more efficient way than telephone and and email and I kind of lump this together and I just call it account management to provide your independent reps and indeed your direct salespeople as well with the tools and information they need to manage their client accounts more effectively and effectively what we're looking to do is to support that conversation between your reps and your joint customers so that actually is the purpose so now we've gone from a fuzzy purpose that would exist in an awful lot of CRM systems to a very clear purpose, which is to support your reps' conversations with, with your customers. Now to support those conversations, what they need is data. And the data they need is, by and large, the data that's held in your accounting ERP system. In our customers' cases, it's the Sage 50 manufacturing or just the Sage 50 accounting software with the customer order history, the status, the invoices and payments and so on and, and, and the products. And you need also then around that data a very simple way to join and connect the people, the reps with your service teams, you know, with your service desk, with your rep uh, service desk, around a simple process because the last thing you want to do is make any processes for particularly for your independent reps are complex. So you need a clear purpose, which we've got, support your reps' conversations with your joint customers. You need to connect your reps to your own internal teams around a very simple process and joined around the Sage 50 data that you have. And surprise, surprise, actually, of course, that's what Santigo is providing for you. So let's take a quick look at what that might be like. Okay, so here I'm logged on to Santico as an internal user within the manufacturing company that has access basically to all the information. First thing you will notice is that it's a web-based system. And that's great because your independent reps are spread across the country and perhaps in other countries. And you can set those reps up as additional users within the system. And you can invite them onto the system and you can def you can define their profile, you can define what they can see, what they can do, and you can define their profile right down to, at, at an individual rep level, if you pick on Derek Gross as one of the reps, right down to what accounts they can see under what territory or, or what groups of accounts uh, they can see maybe as a, as, as a, as a territory. So the that's that's just in terms of controlling the reps. In terms of the data that's coming up, what we've got is we've got access to all the data, or at least all the data we need for this purpose, coming up from from Sage 50. And what happens in the background is we've got a small connector piece of software that is polling the Sage 50 system w within you, the manufacturer, and pushing that data up into Santico so it's available for your, sale, your direct sales team and your independent reps, and in fact, anybody else in the company interacting with your sales teams and, 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 and your sales reps. So here we have all the accounts. In this particular example, I've got 65 records there, and this is a head office function. I've got a mixture of customers and vendors. I've got all, basically all the data there. I can group, group these accounts by rep if I want. I can filter on 
I can filter on a particular rep. And if I want to wanted to filter on filter on Derek, just Derek Gross as a, a sales rep, and just see just see his accounts. I can drill down. I can analyze sales. I can create territories. I can assign sales managers to territories and I can assign my reps to, to those territories. So there's a lot of flexibility there that I have at head office. As I say, on next week's Hangout on Air, I'm, I'm going to be going into this in a lot more detail as to how you might use it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to flick over. I, I mentioned Derek Gross as one of the reps. I'm going to flick over to his view. And I have him set up here on a, another browser here. And the first thing you notice as Derek, as if I if I go in and I view my list of accounts as Derek, instead of getting presented with 65 accounts, I can only see the six that I'm de dealing with as Derek. Now, what happened in the past is that I did actually inherit these accounts. I'm a, a relatively new rep on the patch, and there was there was a previous rep working this patch. So actually, if I drill down to uh, some of the details. I can drill down and see the customer detail. I can see all the order history from the individual customers. And in fact, I can see the previous orders for this customer, Armstrong Landscaping, from that were taken by my, my predecessor, Mark Chamberlain. I can actually drill down to any of those orders. So if I'm, I, if I'm dealing with my customer, I can see the status. I can see the, the items that are still on back order. So I can have that sensible and informed conversation with my customers as the sales rep Derek Gross. If I want to analyze product sales by customer, here I've, I've got a line item view of all the sales made as an individual line item basis, the different transaction types, and I can apply in any different filters to that. If I just want to filter them to maybe see who, who else has bought this product before, I can very quickly pull up a query to show that. So that shows the data that I'm pulling out of Sage 50, which gives me an informed discussion with my clients. The other thing I can do is I can have a, a good interaction with my manufacturer's service team and the, my other colleagues in the manufacturers, or indeed other reps on the network, if the manufacturer allows me to see that as well. And what you see is a kind of social style stream um, or Facebook style stream and this is very intentional for a number of number of reasons firstly the idea is to make it very sim quick to learn and simple to learn I flicked back to the head office view from uh, Dolores and what it enables is a it enables you to set up discussion threads about orders or customers or projects that are shared so that if I'm chasing up on a customer order or whatever, all I need to do is, is make a posting uh, to the wall, reference the customer or the order that I want to. That information stays with that customer or the order that I'm querying. It's not buried in an email somewhere or on a voicemail or something like that. The full thread and the full history is maintained. And by having this kind of Facebook style interface, it makes it very simple for the independent sales rep to get started. It's a familiar style of working and they don't have to learn any complex system. So that's a very quick look at how Santico works in supporting that inter interaction between the manufacturer, manufacturer and the independent sales rep. As I say, next week we'll be going into that in more detail via the Hangout on Air. What we've got coming up next week, we have the Hangout on Air on the 22nd of October, 1300 Eastern. And really what we're doing is we're picking up where we left off today and just going straight more into a product pitch and less talking about the whys and the wherefores of independent reps and the different styles of CRM systems that they may want. If you're a manufacturer looking after independent sales reps, of course, one of the other things that would be very useful for you to get to grips with if you're not doing it already is e-marketing. Starting on the 29th of October, we have a series of six webinars all about helping SMBs 
get started with e-marketing. And again, like this webinar, there will be a slant where there's a twist where we're providing additional value to those companies that are using Sage 50. And what we'll be doing is we'll be c covering kind of general topics in the webinars and following through a week later with kind of specific demonstrations around Sage 50 and Sage 50 data the following week via the Hangout on Air. If you can't wait, go to our website, santigo.com, and sign up for access to a demo account. So we've got time for a couple of questions. Okay, I see one question coming up. Do I have to be using Sage 50 manufacturing in order to use Santico? No, is the short answer. Santico will work with Sage 50 Manufacturing Edition, but it will also actually work with any version of Sage 50 2014 and onwards. Okay, I've got another question in terms of what Sage 50 licenses does uh, Santico use. This is a slightly complex one because it depends whether you're using US edition, Canadian edition or the UK or Irish edition of Sage 50 because the licensing arrangements are somewhat different. If you're using Sage 50 US edition, Santico when it is connecting to your Sage 50 to uh, synchronize data and pull that out to cloud-based uh, database, just during that connection time it grabs a spare user and uses that user and then releases it at the end of that synchronization time. So it grabs one of your users for a couple of minutes just to complete that task. But it doesn't grab a named user, okay, for Sage 50 US edition. So as long as you've got a spare user on the system, Santico will work perfectly well for you. If you don't have a spare user at the time that Santico tries, tries to grab the data, it will miss that time and it'll come back and try again later on. And meanwhile, anyone using Santico will just be using Santico off, off the latest version. For Sage 50 Canada and the UK edition, it's slightly more complicated in that you do need to de dedicate a named user for access by Santico. So that's the only differences there. For another question, our reps use mobile devices. Uh, in fact, they use iPads. Does Santico work with iPads? Yes, sorry, I meant to mention that during the webinar. It works with, in fact, Santico, as you probably noticed, it's a web-based system and therefore will work with actually any device that has web access. So it'll work on your smartphone, it'll work on your iPad, it'll work on your Google Nexus or, or whatever, as long as you've got web access. Because you might be pulling up a fair amount of data, transaction history and so on, it's presents much better on uh, a device like an iPad as opposed to an iPhone which has a very small screen. It does optimize itself for the iPhone if you're using an iPhone but of course you won't actually see much because the screen's not that big. So it works very well on tablets. And do I have any other questions? No, that's all I have for, for today. So I would like to thank you all very much. If you have any other questions please reach out to me q.johnson at santico.com or via, as I say, the usual social channels. You can easily find me on LinkedIn or Google Plus or Twitter at Hugh C. Johnson. Thank you.